religious, regal, reactionary. That is how one would describe the orthodox Tsardom of Russia under Mikhail Konstantinovich Dieterichs. Perhaps the most reactionary nation-state in modern history, Dieterichs has went one step further and turned Russia into a theocracy with himself serving as both an unofficial regent and a dictator. Initially supportive of the already reactionary Black Hundreds, Dieterichs soon became dissatisfied due to the compromises they made and their quote disservice to the cause of Jesus Christ. Gathering loyal components in the military, Dieterichs and his men launched a coup against the weak Black Hundreds government and removed them from power just as the Black Hundreds had earlier removed Kolchak from the same. Political analysts say that Dieterichs is a product of the Russian nation's horror-filled experiences with both right-wing partisan politics and Bolshevism in the three decades following the outbreak of the Great War. Dieterichs aims to remove both from the roots and make Russia a crusader state with an authoritarian centralized administration. One of the ways in which Dieterichs intends to further the cause of Christianity is by crowning a czar. At present Russia has no czar. But Dieterichs has already made his possible candidates clear and one of them will soon be crowned. The first candidate is Prince Andrei Alexandrovich. His mother Xenia Alexandrovna was sister of Nicholas II. Upon the outbreak of the Bolshevik Revolution, the prince was not aided by the armed forces despite having served the Russian navy and in the Chevalier Guard valiantly. His hate for socialism might fit perfectly with Dieterich's reactionary doctrines. The second candidate is Prince Grand Duke of Sevolodionovich, a distant cousin of Nicholas II. Too young to have seen the Bolshevik Revolution, the prince nevertheless fears it thanks to the tales of horror his mother narrated him. Thus to Alexander, your average counts list is as scary as any ghost or monster from a children's tale, and Vladimir Lenin was an incarnation of the devil himself. The third candidate is Prince Sergei blazelsky Belozovsky. A member of the Olympic Committee and generally disinterested in politics, he could be the perfect nominal emperor for Dieterich's regime. Similarly the last candidate Prince Alexander Bolinsky is an English rugby player the and could be the perfect the docile emperor that Dieterich needs. And around the outside of another another of Dieterich's short-term goals is designating a patriarch of the Orthodox Church. Just like the Tsar, this prestigious position also has four possible candidates that Dieterich has announced. The Polish priest and Dronik, Benjamin of Petrograd, Sergei of Novgorod and Alexei of Moscow. Daily life in the Tsardom is slowly being rearranged according to Dieterich's doctrines too. For the nobility, the new regime is like living with a strict teacher. The nobles retain their positions and lands but are constantly under surveillance and are expected to remain fanatically loyal to Dieterichs and the cause of God. Additionally the nobles must also serve in the Russian military as quote, frontline chaplains for the Crusader army. Capitalists and landowners are tolerated as a necessary evil, but they too are expected to remain loyal and obey strict laws and regulations. As for the rest of society, Dieterichs and his clique have caused the moral degradation of Russia since the 1900s. They state that the only way to save Russia is to revert to the old way of life by reintroducing the traditional village communes called Mir. Hundreds of such local communities have been formed and local authority rests with them. One positive aspect of Dieterich's regime is this community system thanks to which, the poor and needy are helped while the landowners, nobles and capitalists are expected to fairly share profits with these local communities via a complex bureaucracy. Similar communities have also been formed for artisans and workers in urban and industrial areas respectively. But these social reforms are not to be interpreted as Bolshevik. All strata of society from the lowliest village communes to the highest of nobility and urban industrialist families exist under the long shadow of Dieterichs and the Orthodox Church. The Church itself has been strengthened and given numerous land grants. Those disloyal to the Orthodox faith are persecuted. In order to enforce his authority on all aspects of society and military, Dieterichs uses his Shthab Kapitans. 
They are a powerful paramilitary force that has almost unlimited authority and complete immunity in the ranks of the army. Every community and every military unit is a Stabkapitan unit close by and any dissent is quickly discovered and eliminated with their help. For the hundreds of thousands of Muslims and other non-Orthodox people residing in Russia, life remains an unknown and uncertain struggle and the outside world knows nothing about what's happening to them. For now. Women's role in society is also very traditional and they are expected to be ideal wives and mothers. However at the same, women from every mir are encouraged to take part in cottage industries like food production and embroidery to help the economy.